Hi again guys and welcome to the 57th episode of Weekend Warriors, again revisiting Gran Turismo 3, one of the very rare occasions where Gran Turismo 3 has a vehicle which other Gran Turismo games don't. Unfortunately we're still having the frame rate issues with the edited version of the recording. That's unfortunate, I'm still trying to work a way around it, but for now this is the best you can get unfortunately. Now this vehicle is a very interesting one. It's a car which has only ever been featured on GT3. Strangely enough, I would have personally expected this car to be featured on GT4 as well. But it wasn't, and the car is of course a Nissan Fairlady Z. Specifically, the 350Z. But what's different about this one is it's the concept car. And I personally feel that it's very strange that of all the cars that could have been Gran Turismo 3 exclusives, this is one of them kind of weird. It seems like the kind of car that would have been continued over given that stuff like the 2001 GTR concept was continued over and that most Nissans have been continued over to newer Gran Turismo games. Of course there are exceptions but newer ones do tend to be kept and concept cars are given a lot of the foreground on Gran Turismo. They're given a lot of the limelight whereas on other games concept cars don't generally feature as strongly. There are exceptions of course, but they don't tend to be really good, they tend to be more novelty cars. So is this a novelty car or can it actually perform well? Because of course now, on Gran Turismo 6 for instance, the 350Z in premium and non-premium form is a great track car. So is this one? Well, actually, yeah, it really is. As you can see from this race, it has no trouble whatsoever outrunning full-on WRC machines, but in fully tuned form, it's not too surprising that that's the case. Now, of course, it doesn't have a PP points system because Gran Turismo 3 didn't have that. The engine is a 3.5 litre, as you'd assume. It's naturally aspirated, and it puts out pretty much the same numbers as a newer 370Z. 572 horsepower, 452 foot-pounds of torque, and it weighs in at 1122 kilos. All very decent numbers. The horsepower per ton is very good. 510 is nothing to be ashamed of, and the price is actually pretty good, because you can't buy it, so it's free. It's a win-only vehicle. And the funny thing is, although this is the only Gran Turismo game to feature this car, this is actually my favourite version of the 350Z. I don't really know why I prefer it over the others. I guess it's the looks. It's very subtly different. The exhausts are different, of course, and the front grille is larger than on the production 350Z. But I personally prefer that. I think it's a better looking car. It's a little bit softer, a little bit rounder. And of course, that has to do with the graphics as well. But in terms of what the car can do, it's a really good track machine. Of course, being a fair lady, you can get the tail out if you want to, but all things said and done, it can take on race cars. I would say this is one of the best non-race cars and definitely one of the best concept cars in the game. Not necessarily for straight line performance, although it's not slow in that regard either, but in particular for its cornering ability. It's such a good all-rounder. So, although, of course, it's not going to beat everything in the game, road or race cars, but if you do go back and play older Gran Turismo games and look for cars which are highlights, this is definitely one to check out. But that's it for this pick overall. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.